how many Super Mario games are there? Just think about it for a second. Many people have tried to answer this exact question with a wide range of success. One of the more recent successful attempts at this is a video by Jan Masali. And I want to take this idea and expand it even further. How long would it take to speedrun every game in the Super Mario series? Today, we're going to go down the rabbit hole of what the Super Mario series truly is, and try to piece together the ultimate Super Mario speedrun. We are first going to discuss and establish the most agreed upon list of Super Mario games. And after that, we're going to go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole and uncover the extreme ends of Super Mario and its speedruns. Stick around, because today we're going to be discussing speedrunning every Super Mario game back to back. So, what's a Super Mario game, and what isn't? I want to preface this with the fact that this will be one giant opinion, and your agreement may vary all over the place throughout this video. And that's actually a good thing. I want people to disagree. That's what makes this topic so interesting in the first place. So stay along for the ride, and let me know at the end what you agree and disagree with. So before we can answer what a giant Super Mario speedrun looks like, we first have to define what games apply to the speedrun. On speedrun.com, I was able to find 43 official releases with the words Super Mario in the title. And narrowing that down a little bit more, the Super Mario series on the website consists of 40 games. The Super Mario series on the website consists of all the Mario platformers you could think of, this even counts re-releases such as the Super Mario Advance titles, and updates such as the Mario All-Star ones. On top of that, this list also counts some more questionable titles such as the Mario Maker games and Super Mario Run. While some of these lists consider these games to be part of the series, I want a list that a majority of people can truly agree on. Luckily, there is a pretty solid baseline for defining the Super Mario series. On July 31st, 2020, Mario Speedrunner Cosmic streamed a long challenge titled The Mainline Mario Marathon. This consisted of him speedrunning 18 Mario games back to back. In the span of 23 and a half hours, Cosmic was able to finish every single game. What is nice is that this list of games ends up being the exact same amount that Jan's video concludes with. The only minor difference that you may argue is that Cosmic plays New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, while the original Mario Bros. U game is on Yon's list. And we'll get to that specific argument eventually. These 18 games we will establish will be called the Mainline Mario series. And this is going to be put on the standard end of our spectrum. But today though, I want to sink further down to the bottom of the iceberg and see how much further we can push this question. Continuing further, besides defining the overall Super Mario series, people also sometimes divide the series up into multiple genres. This has also been the same case for some speedruns too. On speedrun.com, there are four notable subseries. There's the console series, handheld series, 3D series, and the new Super series. Going through all these subseries, these lists generally make sense just based on the generally agreed upon mainline Mario series. It only gets messier once you start to get into the re-release territory. Going back to before, there are 40 games listed on speedrun.com under the Super Mario series. So what are the excluded games in the mainline series? Probably the easiest case to delve into is the realm of re-releases. This concept tends to happen with any popular game series. Down the road, as popular games age more and more, there tends to be a demand to play said older games on a newer platform. 
In response to this, many forms of re-releases have occurred. One example of re-releases is older Nintendo games on the Virtual Console, on the Wii, and the Wii U. But that's not exactly what I want to talk about. I want to talk about re-releases that don't just port the game to a new platform, but also completely change the game in one major way or another. One of, if not the oldest example of this, is Super Mario Bros. Special, which was a port of the original Super Mario Bros. released on the PC-88 and Sharp X1 computers. While Special is related to the original Super Mario Bros., it's changed so much that many consider it its own thing. Super Mario Bros. Special has new level layouts, and notably only shows one individual screen at a time, unlike the NES release that instantly scrolls based on Mario's screen position. Since this is a port to two sets of completely different hardware, the physics also vary quite a lot too, and are prone to some unique glitches. With how differently the PC-88 and Sharp X1 was ported in terms of speed, physics, and screen scrolling, on the more extreme end, you may have a solid point if you wanted to argue that these two ports were both separate games. But I decided to talk to Gold and Silver, who is quite familiar with the game, and has the record on the Sharp X1 version. He argues that both ports should be counted as the same game, due to the differences coming from technical constraints of each computer, rather than intentional design changes. With this more experienced opinion, on an extreme scale, I'm going to count this as one extra game, and put the counter up to 19. Before going on further onto this extreme scale, let me define what this scale consists of. To add a game to the extreme scale, there's a few factors that I want to include. First, it must primarily be a platformer similar to the mainline games. Secondly, it must have some structured gameplay or story, whether that consists of worlds, levels, bosses, etc. It must also include Mario as a playable character. And last but not least, I think it's pretty obvious, but I need to say it anyways. It must be a properly released and licensed game. I'll address some games outside of this territory later on. Now that we have established that, let's move up to the next console generation. In 1993, Nintendo released Super Mario All-Stars on the Super Nintendo. This game contains remakes of Nintendo's four Super Mario games on the NES and Famicom. Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, Lost Levels, and 3. This was notably the first time American players could play the Japanese Super Mario Bros. 2, which also became the Lost Levels. So does this count as a separate game? This is a weird route to go down. All four games on this cartridge were previously released, so what's different here? The most notable difference is the major 16-bit graphic overhaul, but some games have more than that. Try playing the original Super Mario Bros, and then try playing it on All-Stars. Both the physics and hitboxes vary quite a bit. In fact, all four games on this cart have separate speedrun categories just for the All-Stars version. So they are separate runs, but should they be separate games run in this hypothetical ultimate setting? Before I answer that, there's two more pieces to the puzzle. In 1994, Nintendo made a second All-Stars release and bundled Super Mario World in with the other four games. I'm not sure if anyone would argue this release would be separate, but with the fact that this release is just All-Stars and Super Mario World combined, I'm going to leave this version alone. Nintendo would release this game yet again on the Wii in 2010 for the 25th anniversary of the Mario series. There's not too much to say here since the release was very underwhelming and was straight up a ROM dump of the original Super Nintendo release. I would put this on the same level as a virtual console game, but instead being on a physical disc. While All-Stars doesn't count separately in the console Mario speedrun, with the separate categories for All-Stars and the few game differences, I think there could be an argument somewhere that All-Stars is its own unique game. I'm going to increase our extreme counter to 20. Super Mario All-Stars wouldn't be the last time that the first four Mario games were re-released with a new coat of paint. 
In 2001, the Game Boy Advance was released, and similar to the Super Nintendo, Nintendo wanted to introduce another group of players to many of the original Mario platformers. From the span of 2001 to 2003, Nintendo would port and re-release Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3, and World, with many minor tweaks, as well as new modes and bonuses. While at its core, these games have the same original levels, these releases have quite more than just that. For example, the game I'm most familiar with, Super Mario World, has quite a lot new in store. Unlike the original, this port has dragon coins and checkpoints in every single level. Playing as Luigi also unlocks a completely new experience, with floaty physics similar to Super Mario Bros. 2. Super Mario Bros. 3 also got a whole new world added thanks to the e-reader accessory that was released at the time. On top of this, all these advanced games have their own speedrun leaderboards and categories. While these are ports and re-releases at heart, I believe on the extreme end, there are many arguments that can be made, but these are separate releases. For the sake of extremes, I'm going to increase our counter to 24 for each game in this series. Moving back to the 90s quickly, Super Mario 64 was notably Mario's first leap into the world of 3D, and has become a piece of gaming history. Anyone growing up with a DS in the early 2000s may be familiar with one of its launch titles, which was Super Mario 64 DS. The game has new characters, graphics, things to collect, and has even more content, including a multiplayer mode. In terms of speedrunning, the game has its own unique set of glitches, and can be beaten with only 3 stars collected. The record, as of currently making this, is just under 10 minutes. This varies quite a lot from the original game, which can be beaten with 0 stars in 6.5 minutes. Between the wide range of new content and new set of glitches, I'd argue this game has a bigger right to be its own entry than any of the other games that I have previously included on the scale. In Jan's video that I used as a reference, over half the people in their survey called this a Super Mario game. For all those reasons, I'm going to bump this to 25. Sticking with Super Mario 64, let's quickly talk about the IQ. The IQ player was released in China around 2003 as a way to release Nintendo 64 games around the country's video game ban. While the console wasn't terribly successful, if you go to the right places, you can find the systems and cartridges. A version of Super Mario 64 was released and even has its own speedrun leaderboard. This version is based on the Japanese Shindo variant of the game, which patches out glitches and changes voice clips. The only other changes to the version of the game is a lack of rumble support, as well as a couple minor patches that relate to how the game saves and injects itself. While a separate leaderboard exists, the changes are so minor that I'm not going to count this as a separate game. Moving a decade forward, let's tackle the headache that would ensue in the new Super Mario Bros. sub-series. As a launch title for the notorious Wii U, New Super Mario Bros. U was yet another establishment in the series. While this game generally doesn't have a negative association, many may say this game feels quite uninspired and very similar to previous entries. Whether you think that or not, this game would spawn many more outlier titles. Half a year later, the game would get DLC under the name New Super Luigi U. To add on to this, not too long after, the DLC got its own separate physical release. This turned into there being three game versions. Vanilla New Super Mario Bros. U, New Super Mario Bros. U plus Luigi U, and just New Super Luigi U. To make it even worse, due to the Wii U not doing too well, in 2019, Nintendo re-released the game again on the Switch, called it New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. So now we have four variants of the game. Which ones are their own games, and which ones are not? Well, this exact debate came up in Jan's video, and to save yourself a headache, I don't want to go too far into this, but to simplify things, according to both Nintendo of America and Japan, 
New Super Mario Bros. U and New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe are labeled as separate games. So to appease any angry people out there, let's increase the extreme game counter by 1, which now totals 26. Continuing on the trend of Mario and the word Deluxe, many forget about this, but in 1999, Nintendo released a port of both Super Mario Bros. and the Lost Levels onto the Game Boy Color under the title Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. Both games vary quite a lot from their NES counterparts, and due to the smaller screen, the camera is zoomed in a lot more, and Mario's physics are also altered. On top of that, many tweaks to the games were made, such as patching out glitches and different enemy behaviors. There are also bonus challenge modes that players can sink additional hours into. In relation to speedruns, they vary quite a lot too. While this version hasn't been run as much as the original games, just watching Super Mario Bros. Any% percent should make it fairly obvious how unique this port is. In this case, I am now making the extreme game counter 27. There are two more recent additions to the re-release category that I would like to tackle before we move on. The first of them being Super Mario 3D All-Stars. 3D All-Stars was a port of Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy all bundled together on the Switch. Besides the complaint of it being a limited release, the other frustrating thing that many people complained about was the lack of additional content. Nintendo pretty much slapped these three games onto a Switch cartridge and called it a day. Due to this simple fact, I'm not going to include this bundle as a separate game for our counter. The second Switch release I want to dive into is Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Like New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, Bowser's Fury is a Switch release of Super Mario 3D World, but additionally includes a new game mode dubbed Bowser's Fury. This new mode has over 100 shrines to collect and has its own separate speedrun page and category. Due to this new mode adding a whole new branch to the game, I think this argument is similar enough to New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe and Luigi U, so I'm going to bring the extreme counter up to 28. With Super Mario Bros. being one of the most influential and iconic games of all time, is expected for the game to have many iterations and re-releases. We already touched on some of these, such as Super Mario Bros. Special and Deluxe, but there's still a few more we need to dig into. Super Mario Bros. Special, which we already covered, was released in 1986. That same year, two other versions of Super Mario Bros. would also hit the market. The first of these games would be Versus Super Mario Bros., an arcade adaptation of the game. This is very much Super Mario Bros, but as a twist, some of the levels are taken from the lost levels, and also have different layouts. There is a separate speedrun leaderboard for this, which many people have run, thanks to it simply being ported to a ROM on the NES. While the game is arguably similar to Mario 1, there are some arguments to be made that this can be its own separate entry. The any% percent speedrun on its own varies quite a bit, and has a warp to World 6 instead of 4. Around December of the same year, All Night Nippon Super Mario Bros. would also be released in limited quantities. This game was tied to a Japanese radio contest celebrating 20 years of their program. There was only around 3,000 copies of the game produced. All Night Nippon is similar to Versus in terms of random level layouts and Lost Souls content. On top of this, the game also has physics from the lost levels. With this game having a separate leaderboard, new sprites, different physics, as well as different level changes than Versus, there is still plenty of room here to possibly count this as its own entry in the series. With both these 1986 releases, our extreme counter is now rounded to 30. Like I stated earlier, there's not too much to say about the virtual console releases. They are the exact same game emulated on another system, but there's still one more Super Mario Bros. variant that I want to talk about, and this is Super Mario Bros. 35. This was a limited time Battle Royale-esque game 
where 35 players went head to head to see who could survive the longest playing Super Mario Bros. There were many features that made this more exciting than a traditional Mario platformer, such as an item roulette and being able to send enemies to other opponents' screens. This game has been unplayable since April 1st of 2021. While yes, there is some traditional Mario platforming here, there's not too much more. It's basically online Super Mario Bros with enemies popping up in your face. With no real way to speedrun this, as well as not being able to play this at all anymore, this game is really hard to add to any of our lists. We talked about re-releases, we talked about ports, and we talked about multiple variants of existing games, but we still have yet to dig that deep into the plethora of potential games here. With Mario being such a huge name, over the years there have been so many spin-offs, and while we will get into the list of other Mario series later, there are still a few more specific outlier games that I want to tackle. Throughout the 90s, Nintendo released many one-off Mario titles, mostly being educational games. There's the notorious Mario is Missing, as well as the lesser known titles such as Mario's Time Machine and the Mario's Early Years Trilogy. And while some of these games may have tiny bits of platforming, I think we can all agree that these games really aren't platformers. Hotel Mario is also listed under the Super Mario series on speedrun.com, but it isn't a platformer and it's not even remotely close to a traditional mainline Super Mario game. Let me know if there is any really niche argument about any of the Mario edutainment games, but for the sake of today, I'll be moving on from these. Going a bit more modern again, there are a few spin-off Super Mario titles that I think are worth talking about. Ever since the spawn of the original Super Mario Bros, every child's dream has been having the ability to create their own Mario levels. Even as early as the 80s, people have found ways to hack Mario platformers into their own unique creations, and over time has spawned many unique ROM hacking communities. Nintendo eventually wanted to tap into this wish, and in 2015 they released Super Mario Maker on the Wii U. The game allowed players to upload their own levels for others to play online, using four different Mario styles. Putting this title into the eye of today's topic, this game is not a traditional Mario title in the fashion that it's not a full normal Super Mario platforming game. But I do think there still is an argument here to be made. While this game mostly consists of playing levels made by others, there are some pre-made levels in the game. There is a mode in the game called 10 Mario Challenge, which consists of 10 pre-made courses that introduce the player to what they can create using the game's engine. With this not requiring an online connection, and being comprised of the same levels for everyone, I think there is an argument to add this to our extreme side. It's a consistent Super Mario platforming experience that is comparable to traditional games in the series. That increases our extreme game count to 31. Before moving much forward, there is even more to talk about in regards to Super Mario Maker. Just a year after the Wii U release, Nintendo also released a version on the 3DS. This version of the game is very limited, and doesn't allow you to upload your own levels online. There is one part of the game that's debatably fleshed out more compared to the Wii U though. The 3DS version has a bigger offline challenge mode, going by the name Super Mario Challenge. This consists of 19 worlds and 100 levels in total. With this being a more proper story mode and full game compared to the Wii U release, I think it's only fair to count this game as well, which puts our counter at 32. Already talking about both the Wii U and 3DS release, you can probably see where I'm heading next here. In 2019, Nintendo made a follow-up to Super Mario Maker and released a sequel on the Switch. I guess Nintendo realized how much better the offline mode in the 3DS version was, because in Super Mario Maker 2, it has a more properly fleshed out story mode. This mode even has more than the 3DS, clocking in at 120 total levels. In conclusion, I am adding every single Mario Maker game to our extreme list, which now sits at 33. 
There is one more Super Mario title that I want to touch on before we get even more obscure, and that would be Super Mario Run. Over the past handful of years, many traditional video game companies have tried their hands at mobile gaming, and that includes Nintendo. Super Mario Run is an auto-side-scrolling platformer that is free to play but requires a one-time payment to unlock the full game. Believe it or not, there is a proper speedrun community for the game and many time-saving strategies have been developed. What's interesting too is that you can play any level in any order, which is a major factor for routing. Clocking in at 24 levels, while it's a unique entry to the series, I think it's close enough to a traditional Super Mario platformer that I'm going to tick the extreme counter up to 34. At this point, I believe I have officially included every game in my extreme counter using the factors that I have established at the very beginning. If you have any other suggestions you think I missed, I'd love for you to share in the comments, but before you do, let me tackle a few other games that you may mention. While I know at the beginning I established the fact that I am excluding any unofficial or unreleased game, I feel there's at least one title that I should address. With Philips in the 90s having the rights to use Nintendo's properties for their CDI console, there was eventually talks of making a Super Mario platformer. A proposed sequel to Super Mario World was formed, but ran into a lot of major problems. With many developers abandoning the project and the CDI doing poorly in sales, Super Mario's Wacky World didn't get too far past a broken tech demo with a basic level select screen. Interestingly enough, there is a speedrun.com page for this demo where a person did a casual run on real hardware. They turned the run into having the goal of getting as far as possible to the right side of the screen. While this is cool, due to its janky and unofficial status, there's not much use for this game in today's project. There were many thoughts I had when first considering games for this project, and one of the first things I thought of was the phrase Super Mario. There are so many games with the phrase Super Mario in it that I haven't even mentioned today at all. Are Super Mario games part of the Super Mario series? I know that sounds weird, but think about it. I have already set my extreme limits today at just platformers, but some may argue that certain other Super Mario games could be part of the series. Many others, myself included, would count some of these titles as spin-off series. As much as Super Mario RPG and Super Mario Kart may be fun, it's questionable to put them in the same main Super Mario series. There are a couple other Super Mario games that some may still argue with me though. The most notorious being Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Straight away, many will argue it should be included because it literally has Super Mario World in its name. But is this game really related to Super Mario World past its name? Instead of playing as Mario, you play as a Yoshi carrying baby Mario, and in terms of gameplay, it's completely different from Super Mario World. A lot more people place this in the Yoshi series instead of Super Mario. This game will always be a big gray area. There's also other games such as Super Mario Land 3. Again, it has Super Mario Land in its name, but it's a game revolving around Wario. I would argue that this has a similar fate to Super Mario World 2. This game belongs more in the Wario series. There are probably even more examples of similar situations that for the sake of time I will not get into. Digging just one step further, there are even more Mario related titles that people may try to bring up that I could very well fit in some extreme category, but I would never be able to end this if I kept doing that. While making this for example, somebody brought up the Mario vs Donkey Kong series. They said that some parts of the games could be considered platformers. While I would dig further into these games and spin-off series, there needs to be some definitive end to this list, and we can maybe look into those series another time. Deciding what games to add to the run is only the first factor of this equation. In terms of speedrunning, we also need to discuss what categories should actually be run. There is quite a large range to pick from. To start off easy, if we keep the run to just the 18 most agreed upon games, 
how do we decide what counts as beating the game? Do credits warp runs count? The Super Mario console series does the credits warp runs in both Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World. In the Super Mario handheld series any percent, does the credits warp in Super Mario Land 2. I think there is more than enough evidence to show that running credits warp is a realistic task for a marathon run. Feel free to write about how these runs are cheating and aren't real, or whatever you want to say this week, but I'm going to move on since I've been speedrunning for closer to 7 years, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. There are also some other categories that can be debated for different games. Firstly, in Super Mario Bros. Special, we have the option of PC88 or Sharp X1. Currently, the fastest playthrough on the leaderboard is on PC88, so for today we'll simply use that. Secondly, Super Mario All-Stars is a bit of a weird case due to it being a game compilation rather than just a core game. I think it's fair in this case to just run all four games included on the cartridge, and there's actually an any percent all four games category that clocks in at around 33 minutes, so I don't think that's too much of a problem. Next, for Super Mario Bros. Deluxe on the Game Boy Color, this is a similar case to All-Stars. The game includes both Super Mario Bros. and the Lost Levels. There currently isn't a category for both games back to back, but we can simply piece both any percent runs together. I don't think it makes sense to run one of the games, but not the other. This next one could be a bit more debated, but for New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, I decided to pick the any percent both games category. This consists of running the core New Super Mario Bros. U game, as well as the content from New Super Luigi U. I feel like arguments could be made either way here, so let's just go on the more extreme end. Lastly, for Bowser's Fury, I picked any percent no amiibo. There is an any percent category that is roughly 9 minutes faster using a Bowser amiibo, but I feel like it's fair to use the more accessible any percent category that way more people have run. Moving past the games I just mentioned, the rest of the categories that I picked are pretty self-explanatory. You could argue in regards to Super Mario Galaxy to do the run with Mario instead, but I picked the Luigi category due to it being faster. I'll leave those debates for the comments, but let's just move on. Before we get to the final moment you've been waiting for, let me just quickly recap where our scale is at. On the more reasonable end, we still have the 18 mainline Mario games that most people generally agree upon. And on the very extreme end, our total increased all the way to 34. Quite a large difference. Depending on your definitions of the series, your number could vary quite a bit. Your number may only be 30 if you exclude the outliers on my list, or it could only be 22 if you include the outliers but not the re-releases and remakes. For video's sake, we're going to be both using the mainline number and the extreme number for our final calculations today. Alright, so finally, here's the reason you probably clicked on this video for. Exactly how long would it take to speedrun every single Super Mario game back to back in one session? Well, I've already gotten the world record times for every game as they start. Obviously, we'll have to make some tweaks for the final estimate, but first let's add up all these times together. Adding up the world record times of every any percent run between the 18 mainline games totals out to 12 hours, 31 minutes, and 1 second. Obviously, the simple calculation isn't even close to our final answer. For comparison, Cosmic's run was 23 and a half hours. So why is that? Well, obviously as a human, first of all, you're gonna need to take a break every so often. And secondly, nobody is gonna get a world record time in each game back to back. On top of that, Cosmic also ran different categories. He played every level in Super Mario Bros. and the Lost Levels did 70 star in Super Mario 64, and didn't do any credits warps. To find a more realistic time in a real-time scenario, we can actually look back at the console and handheld series runs mentioned earlier. Blood Dirk has the record in both categories and does credits warp in Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, and Super Mario Land 2. He also does 1 star in Super Mario 64. Combining his two record runs gives you a time of 14 hours, 55 minutes, and 27 seconds. 
Obviously, this time will be longer for most people, due to this being the fastest marathon time. But if one human has done this before, then this time is clearly doable again. If you want to be nice and even this out, you could put it around 15 hours, and if you want more wiggle room for an average player, you can bump it to 16, 17, or even more hours depending on the player's knowledge. But what if we go further with this? Unfortunately, past the mainline Mario series, it gets a bit harder to get a more serious calculation. Unlike before, the game choices on our extreme end scale are, well, extreme to say the least. Due to how widely varied the rest of these games are, there's obviously no marathon run that we can simply reference. Going forward, let's first add up all the world record times like before. Adding up the re-releases, remakes, variants, and outlier games, we get a time of 10 hours, 31 minutes, and 15 seconds. Adding that to the time that we got from the mainline series, we get 25 hours, 26 minutes, and 42 seconds. I'm also going to get a more realistic time for these extreme runs. Again, you're not going to get a world record every time you run, so let's multiply the time of those record runs by 10% and add that on. That adds an additional 1 hour and 3 minutes. We also need to factor in breaks needed and time to switch games during the rest of the run. I feel a fair thing to do is having a 15 minute break for every 2 hours of gameplay. With the duration of the extreme runs, we get a total of roughly an hour and 15 minutes of breaks. So if we add the initial 25 hour time, and the time from breaks, and realistic gameplay, we get a final count of 27 hours, 44 minutes, and 42 seconds. Which would definitely be one of, if not the longest Super Mario speedrun ever. There you go. That's the number you've been waiting for me to say this entire time. It could be even longer if you want to go more extreme, but sadly, I do have to set a limit somewhere. So there we are. We have a final list and a final time to work with, but how realistic would it be to perform this run? Obviously, this would take a really long time to prepare for and practice, but what about past that? A giant factor that I first thought about was cost. We could just be boring here and just use an emulator for as much of this as possible, but what if this was all done on real hardware and real games? I've gathered the prices of every console and game needed for this extreme run, but it's more complicated than just adding that up. Luckily, there is a lot of backwards compatibility and other ways to play previous games on newer systems. For example, besides buying a Switch for Odyssey and New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, using the Switch Online service, you could also play all the original titles from Super Mario Bros. to Super Mario 64. It also has Super Mario All-Stars, and then there's also the more recent 3D All-Stars collection that has both Super Mario Sunshine and Galaxy. There are also other scenarios, such as backwards compatibility, for example on the Wii, which can play GameCube games, and can also do the original titles with its virtual console service. But let's go more extreme for this. First, let's calculate the cost of running the mainline series if you had to buy every original game and every original console. While this is overboard, we are going as extreme as possible, and we're going to go as far as even buying a Famicom Disk System and Disk just to play the lost levels. Obviously these prices will change over time, but using PriceCharting.com and eBay sold listings for average prices, the total cost right now for all the games would be roughly $300 and the consoles adding up to at least another $1,300. So in total, if you want to go extreme and run the mainline series on all original games and hardware, you'd be coughing up at least roughly $1,600. And to be clear, I am using US dollars for these calculations. This also doesn't factor if someone wants to record and stream this as proof, but that's digging way too far into this, so let's just not even do that. While I don't want to get more extreme with the equipment needed to set up, we can still get more extreme with the games. So let's just hypothetically say we had to buy all the extra games and the extra consoles needed. Well, if we do that, we get a total of 860 for the games, and the extra consoles adding up to 360. But before I add all this up, 
calculating the prices for the extreme counter was a bit harder to solve. The biggest problem was Super Mario Bros. Special. Both the PC-88 and Sharp X1 versions of the game seem to have zero sold listings on eBay within recent years. The only thing that comes up is Mario Bros. Special, which is instead based on the Mario Arcade game. Going back to someone I talked to from earlier, Golden Silver, who's familiar with the games, has informed me that he remembers seeing listings of the Sharp X1 version at $500 multiple years ago. So with the lack of listings available, I'm just going to simply use that price. So at the end of the day, combining everything together, to do an extreme Super Mario speedrun based on today's conditions as of making this video, in total, it would cost $2,840 to play on all original hardware with original games. So that's it, a nearly 28 hour speedrun with a total cost around $3,000. While this is quite excessive, I did call this extreme for quite a reason. Maybe someday someone with the time, money, and willpower will actually perform the extreme Super Mario run. But until then, we should probably focus on the more realistic run speedrunning the mainline Super Mario series. Who will be the second person to speedrun all these games back to back in one session? And how extreme do you think this run could truly get? I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.